Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Audencia Business School and we're going to be talking about their six masters, uh, masters of science and international masters. Here with us to talk about those six masters, I have the pleasure to welcome Olga Kapitskaya, the Director of International Masters and MSc at Audencia. Hello Olga and how are you? Hello, good. <laughs> I also have the pleasure to welcome two students in uh, one of these masters, the MSc International Master in Management, Thomas Carmoine. Hello, Thomas, how are you? Hi, I'm feeling good, thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, Maria Gaziri, another student in this uh, MSc International Master in Management. How are you, Maria? I'm good, all good. Well, thanks to the three of you for coming and for like answering my future questions. But first, we're going to start with the pitch. Olga, it's going to be your turn to talk about the six Masters of Science and International Masters. Are you ready? Yes. Well, you have 60 seconds. It's your turn. So, Odense Business School proposes a portfolio of six International Masters. The common link between these Masters is that this will really help you to build your global leadership skills and help you succeed your international career. So, in our Masters, we have specialized international masters such as supply chain and purchasing management or food and agribusiness management. We also have general masters such as international master in management, our most flexible one that allows you to get one out of six specialization or European and business management that allows you to study in three languages, three countries in just one year. And I would like to introduce our two newcomers and uh, MEC in data management in finance. So we will uh, dive into this exciting area of data science for people who want to apply it to finance. And you can do a specialization in Hong or in China. And Cognac experience on wine management. You can keep going, you can keep going, it's fine. Don't worry, I will let you leave more than 60 okay. seconds. And we also have a master in cognac spirit and wine management that will allow you to go over each step of this business. Well, perfectly clear. Thank you. Almost perfect. Uh, well, we're going to talk about the, We have like 30 minutes to talk about the six masters. First question first, what's the difference between an MSc, a master of science and an international master's, Olga? Is there any difference? International master is just a general name. It's a name for candidates, for students to understand what is going on. And it's to highlight the fact that this master will learn, help people learn this multicultural uh, skills. MSc is a label from our regulation body, which is called CEGEO, Conférence des Grandes Écoles. So it's a, a label that we ask and that we have obtained for all of our masters, except for EIBM, European and International Business, because it's built on a very different schema. Perfectly clear. Thank you very much. Now I understand the difference between those two. What would be the entry level and the, the kind of academic background I need for those six masters? Uh, so, so you have there's some differences between these masters and the very specific details can be found on our website. But main idea is that people need to have a four year diploma before being able to join an MSc. Uh, it can be business or non-business. Uh, however, if it's not business, we invite people to go through our extended period. It's called MEC in two years, although it's less than two years. Um, and also students who have three year diploma, they have to go through this extended period in the summer. Well, maybe now, Thomas, you could introduce yourself and tell us your academic background and what you did before applying and so that like we can experience a little bit more the kind of student I will find in your specific MSc. Right. So uh, basically, I come from France. Um, so I had after my baccalaureate, uh, I left to live in the US for one year. And then I actually went in rent school of business to uh, to actually complete a three year bachelor. And then I wanted to enter an international, uh, inter like an international master that would be more oriented toward the entrepreneurship, um, and that's uh, that's what Odentia gave me uh, during those last two years. What about you, Maria? 
what would be your academic background? How would you pitch yourself to all of us? So for me, I come from a psychology background. I am Lebanese. I studied psychology at University of and I wanted to study business because I felt a passion to it. But it was hard to go into business without having any any academic background in related to business. So when I heard about Odense and I heard that they offer actually masters for people who don't have a background in business and that they have this program that uh, Olga has just talked about that prepares you for the masters, I got really excited. And ever since I went into, into Odense, I haven't regretted this, this, this decision. It's, it's really, really amazing. And so I can tell that they're like different, like uh, nationalities, different like background. And um, and I was wondering if it was the same in your class. Is it just like, is it just one French, one Lebanese or are there like many other nationalities? Because like international is a strong word when it comes to those masters. You can find in one class actually around uh, 15 nationalities. You have from Vietnam, from China, India, Slovakia, you have uh, Slovakia, you have Lebanese, French. So. There's no one nationality um, that has a bigger percentage than other nationalities. We're really, really diverse. And this adds to the value that you get out of this program, out of the programs in Odensea. Olga, how do you make all those people from like all different backgrounds work together? Is there, isn't like a bit complicated for group projects to work when you don't have the same, um, the same culture? Um, yeah, so just as a statistic, across our six masters, we have 32 nationalities for the students. And uh, one of our main goals is indeed to help our students work together multiculturally. And it's also my academic background, some of my colleagues' academic background. So basically, we take it as an ex we, we, we don't hope that people will just, you know, miraculously learn how to work together across cultures, but we put in place academic learning and a sort of organization and logistics that will let's call it invite but that will strongly invite people to work together but we're here to speak to them to help them to go through some moments that are maybe a little bit uh, more complicated and uh, my biggest compensation is that uh, although it can be a little bit uh, you know difficult during the year by the end of the year huge percentage of our students really go for a breakthrough and i think they're really well trained for multicultural work you mentioned the six different MSCs, uh, so uh, International Master in Management, Master in European and International Business Management, MSC Supply Chain and Purchasing Management, MSC Food and Agribusiness Management, and the two, and, um, the two new MSC in Connect Spirits and Wine Management, and MSC in Data Management for Finance. So those are the six mm -hmm. that you represent. How do I know which one to choose and do they all have the same international recognition? Uh, how do you know which one to choose? I think the best thing to do is to go for what you want to do in life. At the level of master, uh, yes, we look at the content of the courses, but we also look at the information on what sort of job it can give you. So I think people have uh, the maturity to see what sort of uh, career they want to build. So the choice, I think, will go exactly more for this thing. Uh, out of this family, IMM is a little bit more generic, but still, this means that people know that they will work more in, you know, management um, uh, rather than, for example, f finance very specifically. So just go for what you like. Uh, and the second question, I'm sorry, can you remember? It was, do they all have the same international recognition? Are they all as uh, well known to the companies as each other? Uh, the, the four masters that run for several years, yes, they have very good international recognition and they find their public and they find their employers. The two new ones, we it's new, so we will see. But uh, we did the market study, we spoke to our partners from companies. So, of course, we count on the fact that they will be just as well recognized as the others. Thomas, why did you choose that master? Did you already have a professional project in mind? Did you already know what you wanted to do before applying? So I had the chance to actually um, have several uh, internships, so have some uh, professional experience, and that enabled me to uh, know a little bit more about what I wanted to do in the future. Um, so basically then, uh, once my bachelor um, came to an end, I was feeling like I wanted to stay in this area, uh, knowing that I wanted to go in abroad in the future. Um, and so I was looking for uh, a master that would enable me to um, go on that entrepreneurial um, area 
as I'm, I'm building my own company right now. Uh, and I had this plan before, uh, before I went to Odensea and uh, this international aspect of it. And so um, I applied for uh, the same uh, master in uh, Rennes School of Business, so the, school, the business school where I was before, and Odensea. And the thing that made me choose Odensea over uh, Rennes School of Business was the international aspect. Um, in Rennes School of Business, it was only like 20% of classes in English. As of Odensea, it was uh, 100% of classes in English. And surrounded by international people. So that's why I chose uh, Odensea over some other um, other business schools. Was it the same for you, Maria? Did you have like any other reasons? Was it the same international aspect or t could you tell us? So for me, I chose the international masters because I knew I wanted to work in a field where I travel a lot, where I get to face the challenge of being in a different culture of figuring out how the company should behave in this different market. And I knew that an internal masters will put me in the industries or the job positions that are full of these challenges. And that's why I chose the international masters uh, and specifically at Odensea because it has this reputation of being um, it teaches you everything you know related to cultures, how to work in uh, intercultural teams, how to manage intercultural teams. And I have my cousin who graduated from Odensea and she immediately found work after graduating and she really recommended this university for its culture, uh, intercultural aspect. Olga, uh, Maria just mentioned the teachers. Do all mm -hmm. uh, the professors have experience in the field and do they work at the same time as lecturing? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, the, we have, um, you have, I would like to say, two types of professors. You have professors who are academic professors, so they teach the students and they do research. Uh, some of these academic professors also have professional experience outside of academia. Many professors contribute to what we call chairs, which is, you know, these departments, a part of business schools that would work with companies on a more applied questions. So you have this part of people for whom it's, you know, it's their permanent job, if you want. And then you have part of professors who indeed, exactly as you say, have another professional activity in the area, and they come to teach students for, for pleasure, for share their experience. So what is interesting for me here is that the students, they get basically you now this double point of view. What is happening in this industry here and now, and also what might be happening later on, because they do have these highlights on the research. It's sort of a little bit different vision of the future. And we're in business, so we like this idea of you know sharing multiple points of view of many different people and just let the students uh, get their own idea or build their own opinion. Well, we talk about international, but the school is based in France. And uh, what are the advantages of studying those courses specifically in France and specifically in Nantes? Um, well, Odense is in Nantes, so I guess uh, th there's, you know, a story into it is that at one moment this business school in France has decided to open up to uh, an international master's, international students. Um, I should say that we have more than 20 nationalities between among professors, so we have a very international faculty. And then in itself, Nantes is a very international city. It's a very student city. It has a very active uh, um, societies, communities of um, academic and professionals from all over the world. Uh, and it's a pleasant city to live, like many university cities uh, across the world. Uh, so for me, all of this will make the city both attractive and appropriate for studying, well, should I say intercultural or should I rather stay multicultural, you know? Students from 30 countries studying with professors from 20 countries. It creates you in a city in France, indeed. It creates, I think, a very beautiful uh, environment for, for developing. Thomas, Olga mentioned the, the student life and, and uh, how pleasant the city is, as well as the professional, the courses, and all of the advantages that you have. Do you agree with Olga? What is your experience, I mean, from a student's per perspective? Well, so as we know, um, Last year was kind of hard uh, for all students, I think, across the world. Um, however, we we had the chance with Maria before uh, before all this happened to uh, actually hang out and enjoy some um, nights out in Nantes. Um, and it's actually a very pleasant city. You can feel the atmosphere. You can feel it's a student uh, it's a student city, and there is like. 
I, I don't know how to express it, but, you know, you can feel that, um, like, people there, uh, they're very uh, joyful, happy, and they want to share anyway. Even they're, if they're French or if they're uh, from other nationalities, you can meet with people in the bars, you can go in parks and actually enjoy um, a football game, a basketball game, tennis game, whatever you, you want to play. And uh, yeah, I think Maria can also uh, express uh, her opinion on that on that point. But uh, I think we we all agree on that. Well, Maria, you heard Thomas. Do you agree or do you not? <laughs> I fully agree. As Thomas said before the COVID, before that we went into a full lockdown, we were really enjoying so many activities. Yeah, there was uh, regular events prepared by the IC team of Orencia. We had to go to parties. We could meet at the park, have a picnic. There were also some sport activities that we could do with some we one time we organized a kayaking trip uh you can also go for a hike and uh, like some some places where you can walk for up to three hours and it's just it's it's a beautiful scenery here and not as a great city friendly friendly people and they're not really stressed around here you know it's not as it's not a really fast-paced city um so you, you can take the time to enjoy social contact uh, go out in nature and at the same time learn a lot Perfectly clear. Thanks to the two of you for like sharing your own experience and your own student's perspective, which makes it even more clear. It's time for our first break. Let's go to the cliché. So the clichés are about preconceptions, ideas that you might have had before applying. I guess uh, I'm going to ask the, the two of you, the two students, because like you are in one of the masters. When I say not, when I say Odensia, when I say MSc, International Master in Management, what comes to your mind, Thomas? Uh, well, I would say that um, like a preconceived idea uh, would be about the marketing field that is uh, like full and that you wouldn't be able to find a job in the end uh, of, of your master. Uh, I think that for two reasons that's not true. The first one being that um, Odensia has a great career service and can really help you and find the right uh, the right job or right internship for you, and then will be able we will enable you to launch your professional career. Uh, the second one is that you actually need to stand out from crowd, and I think that uh, Odensia is really the uh, business school that will enable you to do that. And you that like you can you can see that from actually their slogan, which is never stop daring. And that's basically my advice to you guys if you think that uh, market field uh, market field is, uh, is 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 full. It's not. All there right. is always a place for you. Well, we got the message: never stop daring. Okay. Maria, what would yeah. be the cliches that comes to your mind? Um, the first cliche that comes to my mind is the fact that it's hard to work with international uh, teams and that you won't really get a lot of, out of this experience. Uh, it's true, it's hard, but you get you get the hang of it as soon as like you start working in, on multiple projects with international teams, you learn a lot. And the, I, the thing of courses and the teachers is that they really create an, an inclusive atmosphere where nobody feels left out. We all get the chance to participate. We all learn from each other. And you get the chance to discover that we all really have a lot of unconscious biases that make us make us have these stereotypes stereotypes on certain cultures that make us stop wanting to work with them when it's, just, it's really just a stereotype in our own head. So, yeah, the cliche that I would want to debunk is the fact that you don't get a lot from working with international teams when you actually get learn a lot. All right. So you have to dare and you can work all together. It's a strength. Any other thing that comes to your mind you want to share with us? Or are we done with the cliche, Maria? Um, it, it's the thing that Thomas just mentioned, the idea that you can, you really have uh, an advantage of graduating from Odensia. It's not a marketing stunt, the fact that when, when they tell you 90% or 100% of the alumni of Odensia find a job like two months after graduating, it's not a marketing stunt. Actually, as Thomas has just said, Odensia provides you with a lot, a lot of resources like uh, the Career Center, the uh, online virtual forums that put you in contact with a lot of recruiters and you are certainly going to find a job you no know, later than that. I'm not sure about the statistics, but you won't take a lot of, a lot of months to find a job after graduating. All right, Olga, your students are telling us it's not about marketing and never stop daring. 
So my question is very simple. How will you teach a students to never stop daring? Ah, interesting. Um, how will I teach to... Uh, I think the main idea is uh, pretty much the same idea as in the innovation. In a sense that um, often we don't dare because we're afraid to make mistakes. And uh, I think there's, there's a way of uh, authorizing yourself and creating the environment where you can make mistakes. And then you teach yourself, you know, Maria was talking about biases and this personal development, professional development, that uh, maybe something that didn't work perfectly well the first time, you use it and you build on it to make it better next, next time. So I think this would be my approach uh, to, in, uh, which is a little bit like coach style, but this would be my approach in uh, learning the students to never stop daring. And then on top of it, you know, you have all this technical stuff, like techniques of innovation, techniques of development and so on. Another question is concretely, what do you call the 360 degrees approach? Thank you. Thank you for this question. I've read this text and I asked our marketing team what exactly they wanted to incorporate into it. And okay. they said, oh, this is this idea that you've told us about that students need to develop academically, that students need to develop uh, personally, that you cover the beginning of the approach, beginning of development, and then you also cover the relationship. You know, Odentia has a very uh, developed relationship with the local or international ecosystems, with employers. So basically, we look at the what can you do with the job, and we also help you to get in contact with the people that uh, that will help you to get the job that you want. And so they decided, you know, to package this um, idea in this beautiful phrase of 360 degree approach. Okay, that, now, now, now that's very clear. Now we understand everything and, and why it would phrase that way. Uh, you mentioned uh, not only academic skills, I would say it was like hard skills and soft skills, and what technical skills as much as management skills in line with companies' needs uh, will you teach me? Since we're talking about soft skills, I guess that like all the six masters are going to teach you like some of, I wouldn't say the same soft skills, but like some of them must be the same. Which one would they be, Olga? And then I will ask Thomas and Maria to tell us which soft skills they've learned. So you can think of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so indeed in the design of our international masters and uh, we have incorporated some of their understanding of let's say strategy which is a little bit more of a hard skill and also uh, a present part of soft skills. Why did we do it? Uh, because employers told us that it's extremely important and that higher you get with the diploma uh, the, the more of the soft skills you need and it corresponds also to our vision so of course we were happy you know that the market uh, gets the same stance on it as us uh, so if i take an um, example we do teach the students um, what we call organizational behavior and it's not just uh, organizational behavior is an academic area but out of it you get the soft skills that will help you to get the posture that you want so we will uh, teach the students understand the notion of motivation, apply it to them, apply it to their whatever future employees, apply it to multicultural teams. We will teach the students how to work with multicultural teams. Uh, we will teach the students uh, things like how to get organized, how to manage your time. We will teach the students how to manage their stress. Uh, we work with students on leadership, leadership development. We work on communication, business communication. Uh, and many other things, but maybe maybe it's already it gives already some idea. Yeah, all right. So that it, it gives us like a better, a clearer picture. Maria, what would be the main soft skill that you've learned, thanks to Odensia, thanks to your MSc? An an interesting soft skill that I realized that I've learned recently. Recently, it is to maneuver in complex situations, and I've <laughs> realized that I've re learned this specifically because of the business simulation classes that we've. Had. Had. We were put in scenario. You don't know anything about the market, and you're supposed to win the game against so many companies. And you are working with a team again with intercultural mem members from different cultures. So you're supposed to communicate, base de decisions on incomplete information, and win the game. So it was really in, in the both cl both classes that we had this business simulation. It was really complex. It was really eye-opening because 
I had to communicate my fears, my concerns, everything that I was thinking, work on the same Excel sheet with my friends. So it was a re really interesting soft skill to work in complex situations. Well, thank you. That was very massive. We were like facing the screen with you. And I guess like uh, it's a pretty useful skill nowadays. Thomas, what would be yours? Yeah, so first of all, I'd like to come back to what uh, Olga said uh, about the school helping us never stop daring. Um, I really think that the point that she she has made uh, with the uh, with the acceptance of failures and all that is is very the key uh, to enable us as students to uh, like to basically empower us. And so the the soft skill that I developed with Adencia, which is pretty linked to uh, these this acceptance of failure and even learning from failures, which is something that we are not really teached here in France, um, is probably my self confidence because, as you know, we are allowed to fail and we are allowed to make mistakes during classes. Like teachers, they don't judge you. Other students, they don't judge you as well. And so these uh, like this atmosphere basically enabled me myself to develop my self-confidence uh, over the two years I've been um, studying at Odensia. All right, the virtues of failing are mainly underestimated and I guess Odensia doesn't make that mistake. That was like, that's also like very useful. Olga, is there a research track that could be followed after this, after one of the MSc or an international master's? It's not necessarily the main goal of uh, MEC is not to go for PhD or to go for research track. Uh, statistically, we do have some students who choose to go for research track, but the numbers are really very small. So as a part of our program, we do have a course on research methods and business because as a part of uh, MEC or international master's, students need to do a uh, professional thesis and so we want them to, to you know to do it properly and so to learn some uh, important core skills for this thing but it's not the main um, the main goal of this master I think people uh, who get out of this they, they massively want to uh, go for work and then you also have some small percentage who probably would go for another master but much more specialized because they have discovered something very particular and they want to go more in depth into it you mentioned the ecosystem and how Odensia was like being uh, making mm -hmm. the most of the ecosystem that they were in. Would I become more employable through French companies having completed these masters? Or is it just like uh, for international companies? Uh, it depends. Um, how can I answer your question? Yes, going through a master at Odensia in Nantes, of course, makes people more interesting for French companies that if they have never gone into a French master in France. Uh, who will be employed by a French company? Uh, one of the very important questions is the question of language. We need to be clear that uh, companies, uh, French companies, they want to get international students, they want to get people with multicultural experience, they get more and more open about it, but they still want, in majority of cases, to have people who are capable of working in French at the moment of graduation. So this can be, uh, you know, the point of difference. One last question about the alumni, alumni network, when it comes to the alumni networks. Will a student be an alumni from the MSc he picked or from all the MSc and international masters? So is it a common alumni network? Alum sorry, I will let Yeah, you, actually the system of alumni, yeah, I'm sorry to cut you. The system of alumni works for the whole school. So when you become an alumni, you're an alumni of the whole school of Odensia. And this is also one of the interests of this thing to be able to get in contact with this huge number of people because you know Odensia per se exists for 120 years so it's, you know it's an old young old lady um, so basically you become a part of this huge community on a very different level of development some people are very senior some people are youngster and the collective if you want institutional work on alumni really goes into this local very inclusive approach so the actions pure program they're more on a more relational if you want basis than institutional basis i love the idea of Odensia being an old lady um, well we only have two minutes left so it's time for extra time two minutes and i'm going to give 30 seconds to you thomas to tell us everything that you want us to know before 
the end of that interview? Well, in my opinion, uh, Potencia is the turbo compressor that will basically enable you to, to uh, well, that will give you the tools to actually start uh, pretty confidently your uh, professional career and that will uh, bring you this international background that you need and also the network that you need to start. Very clear, very precise, 30 seconds perfect. Maria, your 30 seconds. I would say, like, when you go into Odensea, ask a lot of questions because you have teachers with impressive backgrounds. You really need to get all the information you can get out of these people and out of your classmates. I would advise every, the person who are joining to, to network because the value of the degree is also in the networking that you gain. And I would advise that person to um, don't rely on having if a really good schedule fixed all, all the time. You are going to have a very changing schedule. So in order to adapt, you need to have a, a, some sort of, um, um, if you're looking for a source of income, some sort of platform that you can work on or something that will enable you to get this income and not a, a part-time job. Okay, perfectly concrete, like uh, like for yeah for this whole interview was like very concrete. Thank you for that, Maria, as well. Olga, the last minute, the last words, what would they be? Um, so I would like maybe for this last words to highlight the experience that students can get when they join Odensea. Uh, the thing we haven't talked about, but Odensea is one of the very small number of schools that have three major international accreditations, less than 1% of schools who have it. So this uh, really adds the value to the diploma, but this also means that we implement a quality procedures in our teaching or in running the programs at a very high level. And then in terms of real life, we already said students get rounded set of skills in terms of hard skills and soft skills. Uh, students work with many different people, so really well developed multicultural experience. We always want to bring academic knowledge and real life issues and real contact with, you know, companies or institutions. And our goal is to help you become a global leader and make uh, build the most exciting international career. Why right, becoming a global leader and uh, never stop daring is like pretty like a useful, useful tool in life. Thank you, Thomas, for uh, answering the questions. Thank you, Maria, as well. And thank you, Olga, uh, for the people watching. I hope to see you soon on Copy Chanel.